Mark chapter 2. When he turned to Capernaum, after some days, it was heard that he was at the house. So many were gathered that there was no longer room for them even outside the door. And he kept proclaiming the word to them. Some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four men. When they couldn't get near Yeshua because of the crowd, they removed the roof where he was. And after digging through, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. Yeshua, seeing their faith, said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the Torah scholars were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak like this? He blasphemes. Who can pardon sins but God alone? Immediately, Yeshua, knowing in his spirit that they were raising questions this way within themselves, said to them, Why are you questioning these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk and take your mat. But so you may know that the Son of Man has authority to pardon sins on earth. He tells the paralyzed man, I, the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. At once, the man got up, took his mat, and walked before them all. They were all astonished and glorified God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. And again, Yeshua went out by the sea. The whole crowd kept coming to him, and he continued to teach them. As he was passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. He said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. Now it happens that Yeshua was reclining at the table at Levi's house, and many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Yeshua and his disciples, for there were many, and they were following him. And when the Torah scholars of the Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they began to say to his disciples, With tax collectors and sinners he eats? And when they heard this, when he heard this, Yeshua said to them, Those who are healthy have no need for a doctor, but those who are sick do. I did not call to come the righteous, but the sinful. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. They came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Yeshua said to them, The guests of the bridegroom cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. No one sews a patch of untrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise the patch pulls away from the old and the worst tear happens. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost, also the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Now it happened on Shabbat that Yeshua was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to make their way, plucking the heads of the grain. The Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not permitted on Shabbat? And he said to them, haven't you ever read what David did when he was in need? And he and those who became hung- who with him became hungry. Now he entered into the house of God when Abiathar was Kohen Gadol and ate the showbread, which is permitted only for the Kohenim to eat, and gave even some to those who were with him. <laughs> then he said to them, Shabbat was made for man and not man for Shabbat. So the son of man is Lord, even of Shabbat. Chapter 3. Yeshua entered the synagogue again, and the man with the withered hand was there. Now some were carefully watching him to see if he would heal him on Shabbat, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Stand up here in the center. Then he said to them, Is it permitted on Shabbat to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they kept silent. After looking around at them with anger, grieved by their hardness of heart, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out right away with the Herodians and began plotting against them how they might destroy him. Yeshua, Yeshua withdrew to the sea with his disciples, and a large crowd from the Galilee followed, from Judea and from Jerusalem and from Edomia and beyond the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. A great number, hearing all he was doing, came to him. He told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him because of the crowd so that they wouldn't mob him. For he had healed many, so that all those afflicted fell down before him in order to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, would fall down before him and cry out, You are Ben Elohim. But Yeshua strictly ordered them not to make him known. Now he climbs up to the mountain and calls those he himself wanted. And they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named emissaries, so that they might be with him. And he might send them to proclaim the good news. 
and to have power to drive out demons. And he appointed the twelve to Simon, he gave the name Peter, to Jacob and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, he gave the names Boanerges, which is son of thunder, and Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Jacob the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judah from Creote, who also betrayed him. Then he comes into a house, and again a crowd gathers so that they couldn't even eat. When his family heard about this, they went out to take hold of him, for they were saying, He's out of his mind. The Torah scholars who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Bilzebul, and by the rulers of demons he drives out demons. He calls them and begins to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house to ransack his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he will thoroughly plunder his house. Amen, I tell you, all things will be forgiven. The sons of men that sins and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever slanders the Ruach HaKodesh never has release, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they were saying he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, standing outside, and they sent a word to him, summoning him, and a crowd looking around him, and they tell him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Answering them, he said, Look, who are my mothers and my brothers? Looking at those sitting in a circle around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. Chapter 4 Again, Yeshua began to teach by the sea. A large crowd gathered around him, so he got into a boat on the sea and sat down, and the crowd was by the sea on the land. He began teaching them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to spread some seed. It happened that he, as he sowed, some fell aside on the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it didn't have as much soil. It sprang up immediately because the soil wasn't deep, but when the sun came up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew and choked on it, and it yielded no crop. And others fell into the good soil and were producing fruit, springing up and increasing. They yielded a crop, producing thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. And he said, He who hears, let who he who has ears, let them hear. When Yeshua was alone, my goodness, um, those around him with the twelve started asking him about the parables, and he told them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those who are outside, everything is in parables, so that seeing they may see, not receive, and hearing they may hear, not understand, so they may not turn back and be forgiven. He said to them, Don't you grasp this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. There are the ones beside the road where the word is sown. Wherever they hear, Satan comes quickly and takes away the word that has been sown in them. These are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy, and they have no root in themselves, but last only a short while. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among the thorns. They have heard the word, but the worries of the world and seduction of wealth and desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those are the ones sown in the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and produce fruit thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He also was saying to them, Is a lamp put under a basket or a bed? No. Shouldn't it be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed, nor anything kept secret except that it would come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. And then he continued, Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use it, it will be measured to you, and more will be added to you. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And he was saying, the kingdom of God is like when a man spreads seed on the soil and falls asleep at night and gets up by the day and the seed sprouts and it grows. He himself doesn't know how. Automatically, the earth brings forth a, clo a crop, first the blade, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ready, at once he sends this in the sickle for the harvest has come. Yeshua also said, how should we picture the kingdom of God? Or by what story shall we present it? It's like a mustard seed when it's planted in the ground, though the smallest of all seeds in the earth, yet when planted it grows up and becomes the largest of all the herbs. It puts forth big branches so that the birds of the air can nest in its shade. 
With many such parables, he used to tell them the word, as much as they were able to hear. But apart from a parable, he wasn't speaking to them. Yet when they were alone to his own disciples, he would explain everything. Now on that same day in the evening, he says to them, let's cross over to the other side. After leaving the crowd, they take him along in the boat just as he was, and the other boats were with him. A great windstorm arises, and the waves are rushing into the boat. The boat was beginning to fill up, but Yeshua was in the back of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They wake him up and say to him, Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? So he woke up and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Quiet and be still. The wind stopped, and it became totally calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Even now you have no faith. They were struck with awe and said to one another, Who is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him.